This morning, by the grace of God, we are going to see the key number six. Keep the word, which was the message addressed to the church in Philadelphia. Keep the word of God. Amen. I'm going to read. The reading is found in Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 to 13. I'm going to read the whole thing. It says, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Verse 8. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are in the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jewish, though they are not, but liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet. And acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently. I will also keep you from the hour of trial. That is going to come on the whole world. To, stay, to test the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 11. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have. So that no one will take your crown. The one who is victor victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Hallelujah. A little historic of the church of Philadelphia. Philadelphia, what, that, what is the meaning of Philadelphia? Phila, I believe we almost all know what is Phila, right? In Greek, love. And Delphia, brother or brotherly. So, Philadelphia was a city established 189 before Jesus Christ by a king named Emmanuel II. He was a king of Pergamon, which we also know as Pergamos. So, he took over and established the city and call it Philadelphia because of his brother that was serving him helping him lead and history said that his brother was so loyal his brother loved him so much that people named him Philadelphia the one who is loved by his brother. And his brother will later to take over the kingdom, will succeed. To take leadership of the kingdom. He so much loved his, the king. Atalus is the name of the bro brother. Atalus II. He loved his brother Amen so much. And he served him with all his heart. And people can even notice that. That's where the name Philadelphia came from. And also the city was known from a frequency of earthquake. So people were, I should say, afraid all the time. Because they, don't, they never know when earthquake will happen again. And we all know 
when earthquake happened, what happened? We remember uh, Haiti. Like two, two times. Earthquake shook the whole country. And a lot of people lose their life in there. Our prayer go to them this morning. Hallelujah. So this city, there was frequently earthquake there. And the Lord was sending his message to this church. And like pastor gave the history of those churches in the beginning. It is where the actual Turkey is. So all the churches are almost at the same place. Uh, if you see the map here on the big screen, you will see Smyrna, Ephesus. You will see those churches we already talked about closer to Philadelphia in the middle over there. So they, they were all almost in the same place. Sardis that we saw last time was in the same district, administrative district as Philadelphia. So they might know each other. And also Philadelphia was a very important center back then for the religious, for the believers. And then it was it took, uh, the Greek, Romans, and the Islamists took over uh, toward the 20th centuries. But up to today, it remains a very important uh, reference to the Roman Catholic Church. And when you go there, you will see uh, some uh, monuments there in the first. Uh, those are the ancient buildings that still remain. When you go, you can see those today. And that was... Uh, a, a place of gathering of believers. Hallelujah. Even though this place is took over by Muslim, the background was it was a Christian area. Hallelujah. So there is still hope for Jesus to do something in their midst. Amen. So in the reading, it says, these are the word of him who is holy and truth. Hallelujah. And in the beginning also, Pastor talk about Jesus, the glorified Jesus, whom Apostle John saw. Before that, Jesus came on earth in a manger. I'm not going to go into a detail of this because we already saw it. But we know that he came in a manger. And he was walking in the street of Jerusalem. He was healing people. They can do whatever they please to him. And even in John chapter 13 verse 23. At a certain point when they were sitting together. John who wrote this book. Said he was leaning. He was putting his head on the chest of of Jesus. See how close they were. But when the same John saw Jesus in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, he said, I fell like dead. Because he saw the glory, the glory of God that we sang about earlier. And he saw a different Jesus. He saw Jesus who is in all his glory. And he couldn't put his head on his chest anymore. What he has to do is to bow down before that Jesus. Before the king of kings. Because his eyes were like a flaming fire. Hallelujah. That's the Jesus who is coming back. He is holy. He is true. Because of his holiness and his truth. Hallelujah. John has to bow down. Amen. And he continues saying. That I hold the key of David. Jesus. He said he holds the key of David. 
this confirmed the prophecy given by Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 22 verse 22 who said that when Jesus the Messiah will come the key of David will be upon his shoulder and every door that he shut nobody will open it and every door he opened nobody can shut it but when he, he revealed himself to John he said I hold the key of David the question here is who is David why David hallelujah we heard about the prophet Elijah who called fire from heaven we heard about Elisha who came after Elijah and received the double portion of the anointing that was upon Elijah. And when you read through the Bible, you'll see that he performed miracle double time. The miracle that Elijah performed. Which means he received the double portion. Amen. Even when he was dead, his bone could resurrect somebody that was being taken to be buried. We heard about Enoch who walked with God. And the Bible said he was no more because God took him. Why Jesus was not referring to none of them. Hallelujah. David through the Bible we know. He was a shepherd boy. 1 Samuel 16. Verse 11, when God sent Samuel to go anoint David as king, his brothers, elder brothers were presented to Samuel first. And when God convinced Samuel that no, none of them were chosen, then he asked Jesse, who is their parent, their father, is there any other of your children somewhere? there in the second part of verse 11 he said there is still the youngest he is tending the sheep hallelujah david was shepherd he was taking care of his father's sheep in the forest in the bush where he was open to all kind of dangers out there a young boy, through my researches, I found that he was about 15 years when he was left alone to go in the wilderness and take care of the father's sheep. He had elder brothers, seven of them. But he was the one sent to the wilderness. He was the one sent to take care of the sheep. He was less favored. He was not even considered among his father's children you will ask me how do i know that how can somebody come to your house and telling you that okay i have a gift for one of your children you have eight of them so you call seven of them to come to present themselves and the person said no this one is not qualified this one is not qualified. And then after the seven, you didn't even mention the eighth. Because you don't, he doesn't have any value at your eyes. And the prophet had to ask before he remembered that there was somebody in the bush taking care of the sheep. Hallelujah. This reveal how David was not considered. Even in the Bible, in Psalm 69 verse 8, David will say that I am rejected by my own mother's children. I was not considered by them. He knew it. It was not something that was hidden from David. He knew that his brothers didn't consider him. That's why they sent him to the bush where he was 
exposed to dangers. Hallelujah. David was not qualified for anything. Even the army, he was not qualified for it. When his brothers were in the battlefield, the father called David and gave him food to take to his brothers in the battlefield. At that time, David was allowed to leave the sheep by himself. I don't know who he left the sheep with. But he had to take food to his brothers in the battlefield. But when one of the brothers saw David, he was not happy to see David there. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 28, he asked him, Whom do you leave the sheep of daddy with before you come here? But daddy was the one that sent me. Why are you upset to see me here? Hallelujah. And he was telling David, go away. I know you. I know you like to see everything, to witness everything. Nobody called you here. So David was vulnerable. He was no favor with anybody. He was not qualified for anything. But by the grace of God, he was qualified for something. He was qualified to be a shepherd. He was qualified to take care of his father's sheep. Hallelujah. A stranger in his own house. So, God was addressing or was talking to the church of Philadelphia in the same manner as David. David was weak. He had no strength on his own. But God gave him an opportunity. Amen. God opened doors before David. When David was going through all this, he had all the reason to give up. He had all the reason to be discouraged, to quit. But he didn't. He sees it as an opportunity. Hallelujah. To develop a relationship, a fellowship with the living God. Amen. When he was in the wilderness, David would have a talk with God. David would receive the word of God and keep that word of God and have confidence in the name of God. When he was in the wilderness, lion, bears will come after. But the young boy of 15 years will go after. Because in the wilderness, he took time to develop this connection with God. And he came to realize the force, the strength, the stamina that God can give him. And with that strength, he will go against the lion. With that strength, he will go against the bird and receive and take out, snatch the sheep from them. Hallelujah. What is your story? Have you been less favored? Have you been vulnerable among people? Do you take it as an excuse to remain seated? No one wanting to do anything. Blaming others. David could have blamed his father. For sending him in the wilderness. Look at me. I'm the youngest. But here I am. Among the lion. He could go to another town. Where people will take good care of him. 
yeah, rather David choose seize that opportunity to develop something with God, to place his confidence in God. This will help me later when he was sent to help to take food to his brothers. To witness something that will come to change the whole story of David's life. Hallelujah. When David was there and he saw the giant, Goliath. Insulting God. He was not happy about it. And when he saw the giant, he remembered how a lion will come after the sheep. He remembered how bear will come after the sheep. And not relying on his own. But having confidence in God, he will go after them. He remembered. And he went against this giant. And David said, I come against you in First Samuel chapter 17 verse 45. He said, I, come, I came against you in the name of the Lord. David made the name of the Lord a strong tower. David depended on the name of the Lord. Jesus was talking to the church of Philadelphia. You have kept my word. And you have not denied my name. You place your confidence in my name. That's one of the churches Jesus praised. When he was talking to all the churches. Because they knew, they realized their weaknesses. They realized that they were vulnerable. And they knew that the only avenue for them is to keep on the, the word of God. And not deny the name of the Lord. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. And they are saved. David ran to the word of God. David ran to the name of the Lord. God rescued him. Remember. David was anointed in the beginning. Even though he was anointed, he still went through those things. Have you been called by God to something? Has God anointed you by, for something? Yet you are encountering difficulty. Hallelujah. I was talking to one of my friends. Not too long ago. God clearly spoke to that friend. God clearly sent a word to him. And confirmed everything to himself. And through others. But because of the difficulties. He's been asking questions. He's been asking questions. Why? God will talk to me. God will reveal this to me. Yet I'll be going through difficulties. As he spoken. And I remind he, he himself reminded me of David. And I used David to encourage him. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, he was encouraged. It is not easy. It is not easy when you go into difficulties. Yet you know, you heard clearly the word of God. Sometimes doubt will come to your heart. But Jesus, the holy and the true, is assuring you, hallelujah, that he is with you. He is seeing your struggle. He knows that you are in the middle of this struggle. He knows that you are keeping his command. And you are holding on to his name. Hallelujah. He said to the church. Behold I'm coming. Hallelujah. So because thou have kept. The word of my patience. I also will keep you from the hour of temptation. 
which come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the, the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Hallelujah. Here Jesus is one in the church. He's one in the church back then. He's one in the church today. He said he know all that. But he is coming. You have something. Hallelujah. Before Jesus leave this world, he told his disciple that he is coming back. But they need to do something to get ready because he himself did not, did not know when he is coming back. He did not know the time. So it took preparation. To receive the return of the Lord. And how do we prepare? He said. Hold on to what you have. Hold fast what you have that no one can take your crown. Hallelujah. What do you have? What have you received? The Lord is saying, hold on to that. This is a rhetoric question. You might answer it for it to yourself. What do you have? He said, you have kept my word. You have not denied my name. I mean, you have the covenant of God. He has given you salvation. He has given you his word. The Lord wants you to hold on to that. So that no one can take your crown. Which means, somebody can take your crown. What if you don't hold on to what you have? Somebody can take your crown. Your reward. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about salvation. Hallelujah. You are saved because you believe in Jesus. We are saved because we believe in Jesus. We receive Jesus. But whatever work that God has bestowed on us are the reward that come with it. You are vulnerable. You are weak. You are going through all kinds of things. If you hold on to the promise of God. If you hold on to the word of God, the covenant God has Make with, with you. You will receive your crown. But if you let others discourage you. If you let the philosophy of this world. Turn you away. From holding on to that. Hallelujah. There's all kind of doctrines today. Especially that we are at the end. Let's not lose sight of that. We are at the end of everything. The Lord is coming. He said, I'm coming soon. We are closer to the return today than back then. Do we know that? Hallelujah. The Lord said that to him. That overcome. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. 
and he shall no, go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is in the new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name hallelujah he said he will make him a pillar I talked earlier about the frequency of earthquake in uh, Philadelphia so one of the way they can sustain their constructions is through putting pillars in their buildings so it might make perfect sense to the habitant of Philadelphia that Jesus will make them a pillar it will be a comfort a message of comfort to them because they were going through all kind of trouble because life was being shaken on them and Jesus promised I will make you a pillar the one that is holding the building Amen. And he will write on us his, the name of God. Of the new Jerusalem. The glorious city that we are all awaiting. Jerusalem back then was the center of our worship. Hallelujah. And God is rebuilding everything. God is making everything new. And we are expecting that that name will be written on us the new name of Jesus Amen keep his word and hold on what you have God gave us an opportunity even though we were in the middle of troubles hardships we have this opportunity hallelujah and he promised us victory we need to prepare we need to get ready to get that victory how do we prepare hallelujah by holding on by standing firm He said there were some in their midst who were the temple of the devil. Who called themselves Jewish people. Who called themselves Christians. But they are not. Hallelujah. Let's not let those people turn us away from God. But when we conquer the victory, God will bring those people to worship him at our feet because we stand firm they will see the love of god manifested in our life remember david when david conquered the victory hallelujah everybody was shouting his name even in the wilderness when he had to flee those people who don't have nobody to rely on they went to david hallelujah god is calling us today and he's opening the door would you enter if he opens the door would you step in when god's opened that door that nobody can shut or will you choose your own door? We have our own doors today. We have a lot of things we depend on today. We have all kind of blessings that we are pursuing today. Blessing is good. And when we choose them over God, the author of all the blessings, we choose our own way. We open our own doors. Hallelujah. Jesus said the door the gate we should enter in is narrow it's small it is not easy to get in there but when we hold on when we press it hallelujah 
we will conquer victory and God will write his name on us. He will make us pillar in his temple. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God suffer violence. And the violent are taking it by force. Would you let anything discourage you? Would you quit? Because you are encountering difficulties, hardship. Brothers and sisters, the word said, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you have ears? Listen to what the Spirit is saying. One who holds the key of David is coming very soon. He's going to reestablish us. He's going to reward us. May we be strengthened, encouraged with the word of God. In Jesus' name.